In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our Eucharist today, the 23rd Sunday of the year. The psalm is Psalm 94, and the response is, Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. The Word of God speaks to us in various different ways. It speaks to us in creation. It speaks to us also in our lives and the people around us. And also the Spirit speaks within our own hearts. So we ask the Spirit to help us to soften the hearts, that the voice of God we can hear, and that voice we can respond to generously and lovingly. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, I have appointed you a sentry to the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, warn them in my name. If I say to a wicked person, wicked wretch, you are to die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked person, to renounce their ways, then they shall die for their sin, but I will hold you responsible for their death. If, however, you do warn a wicked person to renounce their ways and repent, but they do not repent, then they shall die for their sin, but you yourself will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs let us hail the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us, for he is our God and we, the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your ancestors put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Avoid getting into debt, accept the debt of mutual love, if you love your fellow human being, you have carried out your obligations. All the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in this single command. You must love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbor. 
That is why it is the answer to every one of the commandments. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself. And he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother or sister does something wrong, go and have it out with them alone, between your two selves. If they listen to you, you have won them back. If they do not listen, take one or two others along with you. The evidence of two or three witnesses is required to sustain any charge. But if they refuse to listen to these, report it to the community. And if they refuse to listen to the community, treat them like a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you solemnly, Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. I tell you solemnly once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Each of the four Gospels is quite different in their background and their styles. Mark was often seen as the very poor relative of all of the four Gospels uh, because it was so short. And for many, many years, centuries, it was thought that Mark had actually just done a resume of Matthew. But only about 200 years ago, there's a realization that, in fact, Mark, as a small Gospel, was actually the proto-Gospel that both Luke and Matthew, and Luke and Matthew were dealing with and they were taking from. So for much of church history, Mark's influence has not been terribly strong. The gospel, though, which has helped to shape the church is Matthew's gospel, even in comparison with Luke. Luke was writing probably for one person originally, writing a very clear well-researched story of Jesus from the believing community. But for Matthew, the gospel emerges as a gospel written within a community for a community. Unlike Luke, who writes two volumes, one which is the life of Jesus and its implications, and then the Acts of the Apostles, which tells the story of the early church. Matthew doesn't do that. Matthew writes the gospel of Jesus from within a community, and you can see it is a community that has shaped it. And you can see also the disputes that are there and the life of the early church within the gospel itself. So Matthew 
is a wonderful book for a church community to utilize, and that is how it has been for much of 2,000 years. Matthew has been the preferred one because he writes from a community, for a community, very practically. And he clusters things together. So there's a, a chapter that is there on parables. And then he gathers the ethical teaching of Jesus into what we know as the Sermon on the Mount. So he collects things within it, five great books that are within the book of Matthew. Our gospel today finds us in the middle of chapter 18. Matthew, in this chapter, is trying to gather some of the teaching about Jesus, shaping it for a living, breathing Christian community. Today, we have only a small fragment of it, and to some extent, it takes it out of its context, because chapter 18 is really to do with power. For Jesus and for Jesus' word to emerge into the world, it needs to do so among human beings. And that community needs to gather and be a community. And what Matthew does is he realizes that a living, breathing community must have living, breathing, real laws and regulations to help it understand itself and to preach the good news. He avoids the extremism in different ways. He, ex he avoids the extremism that is there from people who are total legalists, who want only the law to be done. But he also, there are Christians in the early church who don't believe in any laws at all. Matthew tries to tread a ground which is of the living, breathing Spirit of God. As I said, it's a chapter to do with power. So chapter 18 opens with um, a small little phrase. It's a question with the disciples. Who is the greatest of them? And Jesus addresses that. But the whole chapter is in some ways infused with that question. Who is the greatest? Who has the greatest power? Who has the greatest authority? This is the disciples now muscling in amongst each other, trying to find out who is the greatest. And Jesus keeps slapping them down. In our own world, we live in communities of various sorts. It could be a church community, could be an office community, a community within a university, a family community, all sorts of different things. And power flows, whether we like it or not, through all of those members of the community. And families can be dictatorships. Families can be anarchic with no structures at all. And so it's important that we actually try to listen to what Matthew is saying, distilling the wisdom of Jesus to say, how do we truly use the power that God gives us? Each of us do have power. If we say we don't, then uh, we're deluding ourselves and perhaps trying to delude other people. Each of us does have power. We have power to say things, to do things. Our task, in some ways, is to balance the powers that we have, constantly trying to see where God is speaking through the actions and the words and the intentions of the people around. In today's gospel in particular, um, Matthew is trying to reflect on Jesus in how do we deal with difference within a community? How do we deal in difference? Everybody is not meant to be uniform. They're different. And such a thing as saying, if your brother or sister does something wrong, what do you do? No, you don't throw them straight out. You've got to listen to understand what actually they are saying. It demands real balance, real self-possession. It's very easy in some ways if a person has power but is fearful to actually fear the power of other people, fear the words of other people. We try to push them off to a distance. We want our own beliefs. We don't want to hear the words of other people. So we pray on this Sunday as we find Matthew gently balancing, wrestling a little bit with the early church community that he is from. And, but we can see within his wrestling also the wrestling that we have, maybe to reflect a little bit ourselves, each of us, on where do we find that we have differences? How do we deal with differences? 
Do we try to reconcile? Do we try to really understand? Or do we push people away, turn away, walk away, um, flounce away um, as a way of exerting our power? We pray for the grace of God and the Holy Spirit to operate with us, to continually reconcile our hearts so that we can hear the word of God working within us and that word then can work in our little communities around us. We pray for this. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. And so let us pray that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Father, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by sharing in the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's lift up our hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and the saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with Philip, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all the men, women, and children who bring your good news into our world. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph and the Apostles, with Paul and Matthew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the words of Jesus, in the version that Matthew gives in his gospel, we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all needless distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Praying for peace at this point of the Mass, maybe we just pause for a moment. And if there is somebody that you have been encountering over this last week, maybe somebody close, family, friend, maybe somebody you don't like terribly much, but somebody who may really be in need of the great graces of peace, maybe just to remember them and pray for them now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look then not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And so let us pray. Father, grant that your faithful, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and your sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.